Hey guys and welcome back to this week's update and I have two new fish to show for this week and I've got some uh, some more news update in the tank with uh, parameters and uh, some stuff that's been going on big. Uh, so yeah, to start off with, uh, here's the, uh, the, uh, the bags floating at the moment. So that this right here is a Radiant Rass, uh, really, really nice colours uh, with a black body and then a red rim around that. Uh, two spots on its back and a yellow face and when it gets a lot bigger it, it develops all these really nice um, rainbow stripes all over his face uh, which will look really nice uh, when he gets bigger uh, which isn't too big uh, gets about maybe three maybe four inches or so and this other one here uh, is I mean all fish have many types of different names uh, I like to call this a koi ras or you can call it a redhead salon ras uh, but again, really nice colours, uh, light blue and pinkish, kind of red, orangey head, uh, white body, purple kind of uh, back uh, fin. Uh, so you can see it here, this is a few days later when I released them into the water. They settled in completely fine, uh, so th these are both wrasses, so you'd expect they would hide in the sand for the first, like, maybe up to a week or so, but absolutely nothing, straight out on the first day, which is, it's rare for that to happen really, uh, so I'm happy with that. And they're already on the spectrum pellets as well, feeding on the first day, which is great. Uh, so um, uh, they're getting on well, perfectly fine in the tank, uh, and with all the other fish as well, no aggression whatsoever. Uh, all, definitely a lot of interest in, in each other, or getting to know each other a little bit more. And it has actually brung the other fish out a little bit more, uh, so we'll see if that continues. Um, but yeah, the... Uh, the koi ras, that's the one at the top there, that's mainly, uh, from my experience so far, a few days experience, it seems to be a top dweller. It mean, most of the time it likes hanging out in the top half of the tank, uh, which is cool, it likes scavenging and eating the food off the top of the surface of the water, instead of uh, grabbing it from when it sinks and that. Uh, so that's good, it helps uh, clean up all the pellets that go onto onto the top. I don't really want most of them going down the overflow or down into the skimmer, that helps, he helps uh, clean them up off the surface which is really nice uh, so he's, uh, both the rats are also really picking at the, at the back wall over the rocks uh, obviously hunting for uh, tiny little bugs same thing with uh, the other two rats in here the peacock rats and uh, the gold stripe rats or naoko rats uh, all, all the rats are really uh, scavenging for little bugs all over the rocks uh, which is really cool as well and I paid for the Radiant Rass was £40, so to be honest that's what I'd expect for a Radiant Rass. Uh, and for the Koi Rass that was 55 which is a little bit more steep. Uh, but definitely, definitely worth it, really nice colours out all the time. Uh, and I'm hoping to get maybe another Rass in here, 5 Rass would be a, a nice round number. Uh, so I hope you guys like the fish. Uh, I now need to move on to... Um, the water chemistry in this, which I have a th feeling, well, I know has been a little bit off recently. Uh, so phosphate uh, it did go up to 0 0.015, uh, which is very low, but it's at least there's still a little bit of trace in there. And I have done a water change because uh, the, the issue was with this tank, I'm, well, I'm pretty sure the issue was, uh, my dad's done an uh, ICP test uh, on his tank, so we'll see what's wrong with his water, because it might be the same case uh, with mine. So, uh, my hammer was shot in for quite a while, so you see it's really pumped now, because I've turned the skimmer on and I've put the floss pads back in, well the floss pad and the sponge, uh, so that's going to remove all the uh, organics out of the water, because that was the issue, the, the, the corals didn't like the, uh, the really excess uh, organics kicking, out, kicking about in the water. As soon as I turned the skimmer back on, it, t it got completely filled up within like 10 hours, it was taking out so much, and the floss pad was getting dirty within a few hours. I, I've ch changed that out two, two or three times already now in the past couple of days. Um, and this is a new coral that I got here. I forgot to mention this actually. Uh, this is called a Postlepora. Came out of my dad's tank because he wasn't really a fan of that coral and he didn't really want it in there. Uh, so I, I, I wanted it as well. So uh, I took that off him. Uh, not really nice coral. Will get a lot nicer as his tank has been doing great uh, at the moment. You, uh, you should be posting a video hopefully very soon. Uh, so a very, very nice coral will get a lot nicer. It's a little bit browned out at the moment, uh, but eventually we'll get to start developing these really, really nice green colours. Um, uh, so the, the the nitrate in this tank uh, has actually shot up, which is good. It's gone up to three, 
uh, which is good but that was before the water change so i did about 45 50 percent water change so that probably would have gone to about 1.5 1 uh, ppm which is still good as long as it in between one and five i'm happy with uh, because this is, this is going to be well it is currently a mixed reef tank uh, so i want the nitrates to be at a suitable le level for all the the corals in there uh, unfortunately i still do have some aptases in here i have total maybe 10 10 and in between 10 and 15 of them in here, uh, but I should be able to mop these up with some Aptasia Rex. Uh, you can kind of see that one there. There's two there next to that hammer, that little frag a bit of hammer, which I fragged off actually quite a few months ago. It's actually doing quite well. Uh, my alkalinity is currently at like 9.5, which has dropped off. It's, it's finally starting to drop off now, uh, but I'm I've now I've done a water change that would have well, probably it's, I'm mixing the salt I'm using is fritz salt, so that would have mixed up at about 9.5-ish, so it's probably about the same. Uh, so over the next week or so, I need to get a dosing container, and I'm probably going to start dosing uh, finally. Uh, this tank needs, uh, I've, got, I've already got the dose, so I've had it for quite a while. Well, <laughs> I've had that dose for four, maybe about four or five months or so, uh, kicking about spare. Uh, it's a two-channel one, but I only need a one-channel one. I'll get to that when I start dosing. I'm going to be dosing this kind of special solution. And I am continuing to dose Fibrin into the tank, uh, which is a solution in a bottle that will help clear up the algae that's in here. Uh, because I do have a bit of hair algae. Uh, there is quite a big ball of it uh, over my L corn coral, which is quite a small frag, and I would like to keep that alive, really. It was a nice coral, that. Uh, I don't want that suffocating it, so I need to mop all the bits of hair algae that's kicking about. Uh, the lawnmower blenny or algae blenny that I bought a few weeks back has been really helping with that. Um, that's how it's got its name, algae blenny. From you know, uh, it's known to be fr ferociously eating uh, hair algae all the time. Well, any types of algae is always picking at the rocks, all the glass and everything, constantly, which is uh, really really helpful. And I do have three Mexican turbo snails helping with that as well, but it seems to be not quite enough. So vibrant, hopefully, uh, in the next two to three weeks, should be mopping up this hair algae and currently I have to clean the glass ideally every day to keep it nice and sharp but because I'm dosing vibrant hopefully in the next well yeah in the next week uh, when it starts really kicking in I won't be needing to clean the glass at all because that will really start eating up eating up all the algae that's in the tank hair algae whatever kind of kind of hair algae it is um, it, it will start eating it uh, so I won't need to be doing the glass uh, for the next few weeks uh, which would be nice it's a uh, now that it was quite time consuming actually, uh, sometimes it can shoot in your corals, uh, mainly the hammer because that's quite close to the glass, uh, but not too much, it comes back out in a few minutes, but uh, uh, it, can, it can, me cleaning my glass does uh, kick up the sand quite a bit as well, uh, because I have to get really close down to the sand bed, otherwise you, mi you miss uh, little bits of green and then that, and then eventually it goes really hard and it's, it's virtually impossible to get off, so it's just really important to, uh, to stay on top of your, your glass clean and make sure it doesn't get too stuck on there because if you leave it uh, you know too many weeks and weeks and weeks just let it build up build up build up it'll eventually come to this different type of algae really hard algae and you have to get a proper blade to really scratch it off and it'll probably end up scratching the glass and that so uh, just make sure you you stay on top of that so i hope you guys enjoyed this week's update uh, i certainly enjoyed making it uh next week uh probably nothing new uh livestock wise probably not i am on a hunt for another ras uh, so you can see this one here is probably my favourite one in there, just because of the colour uh, and the character of it. Uh, so I'll leave you with 30 seconds left of the video with just a shot, a shot of the tank and some music in the background. So um, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.